Uh, Rafael, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation. Uh, nice to virtually meet everybody. Um, we hope to meet you all in Brazil soon. Um, no, thank you, Miriam. I just wanted to uh, take advantage of uh, this the idea of the webinar is to provide a more general um, idea of the tech sectors and opportunities and challenges. Uh, this is also the opening webinar of a series of webinars the whole month. So please, uh, we'll, we'll talk about one of them at the end of this presentation. So uh, we'll, we'll bring different speakers, different experts in different areas throughout this month. This is, I guess, uh, the idea is to, to give a more general perspective of Brazil. Um, and the next one will be more specific in different topics. So I guess um, to move ahead, um, to give you a little bit of idea of where we're coming from in Brazil, um, the sec tech sector, if you, uh, I guess we can go to the, the third, the second slide, sorry, Miriam. Yeah. We'll move on, we'll, we'll move on to the, um, the first presentations, let's see, to the third, to the third slide, Miriam, sorry. Yeah, yeah. that's our contact, and then to the next slide, sorry, I just want to give you an overview. So the, the idea of Brazilian technology, very briefly, um, Although uh, about half, only half of Brazilian's population is online, uh, it's, a, it's already the fifth largest internet and mobile economy in the world. It's a top market for Facebook, for Google, for Twitter, and one of the, it's one of the fastest growing smartphone markets globally, with another 100 people starting to come online. And so Brazilians have a passion for technology and social media. That's very important to keep in mind when you're working with technology in Brazil. Um, they really, really, uh, we really are engaged in LinkedIn as well. We're one of the biggest communities, and Facebook, like I mentioned. Uh, well, Brazil is going through one of the worst economic crises in history. Um, uh, so, so people ask me, what is it still worth bi seeking business opportunities in Brazil at the moment? The answer is still is still yes, um, especially in the tech sector. People are more likely to pay attention to efficiency now, and they will be more likely to experiment with new things. Uh, technology creates efficiencies in uh, processes that are extremely inefficient. Looking beyond the crisis, the adoption of smartphones keeps growing in Brazil. Consumer internet uh, keeps, keeps going, and co companies are, are incorporating more technology to lower costs, seek, seek cost efficiencies, and, and better uh, and improve their, their services. So the technology sector, I would say, even in this crisis situation we're going through, is still very, um, is still a very big and, and very and a lot of opportunities for, for companies. Um, in the slide four, if you can see, I try to highlight some of the the the, the upcoming the, the star sectors, so to speak, in technology, where uh, technology um, uh, applications can be applied to. Internet penetration in Brazil is on the rise. Technology companies ranging from education, bio, and clean tech. Uh, finance, fintech, um, healthcare, agritech, and creative economy. The, these are still growing. They're, th these are areas where technology in these field sectors are still growing and where there are a lot of opportunities in Brazil. Basically, uh, Brazil's, I mean, it focuses a lot on Brazil's competitive advantages as it's the largest agriculture exporter in the world, a global leader on sustainability and clean energy solutions and also a sophisticated financial technology provider. Uh, other sectors such as life sciences, education, creative energy, reflect the potential of Brazil's domestic market. So it's, it's, there's, there's a lot of space for, for these kinds of technologies in these sectors in Brazil still. The next slide, please, Maria. Yeah. So to remind uh, everybody that Brazil, Brazil has a large market, a uh, very, very large market, which is good that, that if you have a good, uh, it can be a good test bed for expanding solutions in, in the market. Uh, a company can grow and do extremely well just just in Brazil, uh, and then they can go abroad. So a lot of companies tend to come here and um, and test out their 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 business idea salute and then go to other countries. Uh, Remembering actually that Brazil, we talk about Latin America, but Brazil is still a very different economy and country compared to the other Latin American companies uh, countries. But um, just focusing on the Brazilian market itself, you can because of the wide diversity throughout Brazil in the different markets available inside Brazil. It's a good test bed, as I mentioned. So you can really uh, test what works or what doesn't and then take it to another country, um, Peru, Colombia, for example. Um, recently, there's uh, there also there are, there's not that many, um, not much competitions in, in place for a lot of these sectors. If you, put, if you put together a good team and strategy, you can really have an interesting growth opportunity here. So um, it's, you know, when I say there's no competition, there's always competition in business, but it, it, a lot of areas, the sectors I mentioned to you are growing. So there aren't that many players yet in the market. 
So it's a good good opportunity in terms of less less competition available. And recently, many accelerators, angels, uh, uh, venture capitalists, government initiatives have shown support uh, to innovative uh, ideas and solutions for innovative companies that want to come into Brazil or already work in Brazil. Rafa, can we talk a little bit? What, what are the accelerators and angel uh, networks that we have currently in Brazil? And talk about a little bit about Estera Brazil as well. Sure, um, there's a lot of them, but um, just to top of the head of it, well, to, to start off with a government, uh, government program called Startup Brazil, which started about three years ago or so, if I'm not, uh, three or four, where the government um, has funded a program where they, they link, they sponsor accelerators and they sponsor, um, or they sponsor accelerators to, to, to be the hosts of this program. And in the accelerators, they themselves, the accelerators will identify entrepreneurs that they want to host in um, to for for their programs, so it could be six months, a year. Um, so the entrepreneurs apply through the programs, and the accelerators also also apply. There's all there's a criteria for them to continue being accelerators, and entrepreneurs also have to go through an application process, a filter. Then the match is made. So this program has been very successful in terms of identifying uh, really good companies uh, in the tech area that that's been. Um, in different accelerators throughout Brazil. So there's many in Brazil. Um, uh, in, in Sao Paulo, there's a lot. Uh, uh, Accelerat, um, there's, a, there's a couple in, in Minas Gerais. It's hard to say a couple names. Maybe we can follow up with a certain names that we can pass on, but there's a lot of them that we, we can share with, with, the, with your listeners as well later. A lot of them, in, and throughout Brazil, which is interesting, it's not just focused on Paulo and Rio. So throughout Brazil, there's a lot of um, uh, high-quality accelerators that, that's producing um, great programs and bring in great entrepreneurship, entrepreneurs and and startups with great ideas. So, um, I, so it's it's a movement. Um, I, it's still in progress. I'm saying maybe three four years. This is starting to take off. So the the model is still being identified, but uh, it's really it's really exciting because there's a lot of opportunities for entrepreneurs. Again, but we don't need to depend on the accelerators. These these accelerators are through the program of Started Brazil, and, and but a lot of them run by themselves, of course, as well. But um, uh, entrepreneurs, if they can take advantage of accelerators, it's great because it does offer uh, mentoring, access to investors. Uh, a couple uh, well, investor, there's a couple investment um, groups called Gavia, Gavia Angels. There's one called Anjos do Brasil, which has a lot of links with um, contacts abroad outside of Brazil. So uh, the angel movement as well, um, it's 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 kind of new. It's starting to grow. Uh, Anjos do Brasil does a lot of training. For potential angel investors, tell them what is it, what is angel investment? Um, what's the best way of doing it? What what are the opportunities? So it's a lot of training in this sector too. So, but um, there's a lot of people interested. There's a there's a growing market for angel investors as well, which is very interesting. Sounds good. Um, well, we go to the next um, slide. Yes. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, Yes, please. Um, yeah, so the, the ecosystem. Like I said, the ecosystem is growing. Uh, what's very interesting, we say in Brazil, if you think five, six years ago, um, people, the entrepreneurship word, uh, startup word, doesn't was not really talked about. You, you didn't see it in the media. You don't see anywhere. People didn't understand what it was. And it's been growing a lot. Um, now you have uh, TV programs, you have magazines, you have um, uh, a lot of uh, in-city meetings, meetups. So people, it's growing this uh, entrepreneurship movement, interest, and the ecosystem. So it's very, it's getting very, um, uh, it's, a, it's a good moment, uh, so to speak, in terms of the ecosystem development. Um, so, but you know, it's still, there's still a lot of challenges. It's still it's very complicated and expensive to, to operate business in Brazil. Taxes are high, complex and confusing. Likewise are the labor laws. Uh, this, should, this should drastically simplify um, in, in, uh, eventually in the next few, few months, years. Um, but um, it, it's something that the, the venture capitalists or foreign venture capitalist investors still still need to um, to learn and 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 talk to local partners to learn more about. Um, the, the the startup scene is very is quickly growing. Like I said, and we're seeing more and more over the last two three years more and more experience in technical entrepreneurs uh, replacing the the black and white um, kind of BA McKinsey type of people who, who, who started kicking off the, the ecosystem in the past. Now there's there's people who are very, very more technically uh, who are experts in, in different areas and technical areas. Um, so so that so it's, it's giving more um, a diverse, rich um, perspective in the ecosystem, so to speak. And the the, the, the founders of the ecosystems have, have now now there's there's 
creative new different pe people coming in. So it's, it's getting exciting and, and, and diverse in the ecosystem. Uh, the Brazilians are one of the most creative and innovative people in the, in the globe because of that diversity I mentioned about. Uh, um, it does provide a lot of positive impact on our startup scene. Brazilian entrepreneurs adapt quickly, um, they learn fast, and they can develop new solutions for complex problems uh, that are with very simple, simple approaches which is simple for clients and simple for investors. So that's one of our assets in that country. We really have a, this creativity diversity that, that in the different parts of the country, which adds a lot of value to, to the businesses being built um, and for investors to look into as well. Um, just a quick focus on the, on the screen, I, I, on, on the ecosystem scene. I highlighted three things that, that pop out. Um, it, it, why is, is the you know, ecosystem scene uh, impressive or interesting in Brazil? It is sizable, but with significant growth perspectives. Again, we have 100 million people online already, enough critical mass for any business um, to test out, for example, their solutions. But we still have another 100 million to get online in the next years. Uh, we have about 210 million people in Brazil. So about half of them are online, and another couple millions are coming in um, as we speak every month, uh, every year. So, that, so there's a lot of growth potential for business opportunities here. Uh, leapfrog, leapfrogging, um, what do I mean? Some of our services and the infrastructure is so bad that we, we simply use technology to scale. Um, for example, uh, I, I just read recently the trucking industry. In the U.S., for example, it went from independent uh, truckers to fleets to GPS fleets to Uber-like. Uh, Uber-like models. In Brazil, you can go directly from the independent truck truckers to Uber. So this leapfrog, what I mean is you can use technology to, to jump a couple steps of, of some, some development issues or business opportunities. Um, it's hard to start, but better to thrive. The Brazilian, e Brazilian ecosystem, Brazilian business ecosystem, um, is knownly, is very hard, is known to be, um, it's hard to start a business in the ecosystem, for example, in, in doing business in Brazil. But once you've uh, cleared that hurdle in the beginning, you really um, you, you can overcome a lot of uh, a lot of obstacles, and you have a huge market. Um, you will have fewer competition than you would have in the U.S. or or, or other or other countries abroad. So the, the the so the the companies here can have a stronger foundation when it when it begins. But it's a lot of patience and persistence as well. Uh, it is hard to do business, but it does, it doesn't mean it's impossible to do business. It's very important always to have the the local partner, good, good local partners serious local partners that can help you guide through all the different obstacles that most business have to face with in Brazil and, and foreign companies coming to Brazil. In slide seven, um, uh, just to, to, to mention um, the light, slide seven, Miriam, sorry. Yes. The, sorry. The, so, you know, it's less focused on B2C opportunities. Um, it still exists, but I think what what we 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 kind of we we've noticed that it's a lot more focused on problems that require domain expertise, um, uh, and it's tip so it's typically a lot more to B two B B two B focus businesses as well. You can apply um, you can focus on applying technology to big offline world problems like logistics, home improvement, health providers. So so the the tendency um, is that it's a lot more focused to B two B solutions in the country. Um, a lot of local companies are starting to to master lead generation, scaling up uh, sales teams, enterprise sales, and the market is evolving fast. The the venture capitalist money uh, um, is shifting from e-commerce, which um, to more B two B, like I mentioned, and growth and revenue oriented companies. This is a trend that we've noticed as well. Uh, and slide eight, Miriam, sorry. Yeah. No, but of course, there are challenges. You know, um, there are challenges. It's it's great. The ecosystem is big. There's a lot of opportunities, but there are challenges facing the startup scene. Uh, we I want to mention a few. Uh, lack of product sales and marketing knowledge by local founders who can bring solutions to markets with the quality that is needed to compete compete and scale globally. Second, there's a uh, there's, there's like I mentioned before, inexperienced angel investors and VCs. It's you know I, there is a lot of like I mentioned, angel uh, Gava angels, um, uh, angels do Brasil. They, they're doing a lot of awareness building, training for potential angel investors. So, but it's still a, a, a challenge we meet in the day by day um, uh, workings in the ecosystem. The way to overcome it is time. We're in the right directions. Companies are growing, and I feel that in the future these issues will be fixed. And with the first exit, second, and also second time founders coming in, uh, and and also the, the entrepreneurs coming back, already coming back and giving back to the ecosystem with their mentoring, with with 
capital, seed money, and with their experiences. And so this is a trend that, that will happen, and it still takes time. Like I mentioned, I mean, four or five years is very little time, but there's a lot of, of, of potential still. Um, in, in, in slide nine, the next slide, we want to r remind everybody again that Again, this one that we're starting is, uh, is the taster at the beginning of the series of webinars we're putting together. The next one will be with specific investors in the ecosystem. We're going to have um, two specific investors who, who can talk about the investment scene and, and what kind of, what kind of uh, area and sectors are growing in Brazil that, that are looking for investments, for example, or, or joint ventures. And we have two, two guests who will, who will talk about uh, connecting different players in the ecosystem. So it's going to be really, really exciting. Um, the, ne the next webinar, we'll be sending the updates of that shortly. Um, the yes, next slide. we are going to send the, the links uh, for, for you guys to connect with us. <laughs> Absolutely. I wouldn't miss it. These guys, uh, the, just to highlight one of them, uh, just to highlight one of them, Felipe Matos was uh, one of the first he, uh, the director of the Startup Program I, I mentioned, Startup Brazil Program I mentioned, that is sponsored by the government. And so he has a rich experience in, in, the, in knowledge, no, experience and knowledge and know-how of the accelerators, of the, of the different ki kinds of sectors that the uh, startups turning up. Uh, he's, he, he's someone that you don't want to miss his, his presentation. Awesome. And, the, and we also have Latin Chats. Mm -hmm. And Latin yeah. Chats is happening in June 21st, and we are going to talk with some startups from Brazil, and they are going to share with us how they are expanding business, and how they are expanding to other markets, and what are the challenges and the opportunities. Absolutely. And at the end, I'd like to remind everybody that we have uh, the annual conference in Mexico this year. So that is in October, and we are inviting all of you to be part of this because Brazil is going to be part of that. So Brazil is going to be there as well. Mm -hmm. So you can network with a very high level uh, at the conference in Mexico this October. And now we are open to questions. And we have already one from Andrew in Toronto. And this question, Rafael, is about uh, how the bad uh, political situation right now in Brazil is affecting startups locally. No, that's a good question. Um, it's a good question in general about what, how, how Brazil is moving forward. Um, so yeah, there's a there's a political crisis, so to speak, in terms of um, impeachment process going on. Um, you know, it, the day by day, Andrew. It's. It, I, I mean, I could be wrong, but I, I don't see it affecting us so much the day by day. I mean, investors. There's a lot of um, movement in in investments in entrepreneurship, uh, training, awareness. Um, it, 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 the day by day, I, I don't think it's. I, it could only get better. Well, let, let me let me re rephrase this. Um, the impeachment process will end by August September. The new government that's that's uh, that's in place until the impeachment process. They uh, they are very pro business pro business so um, so things could possibly get better uh, not worse so if he does uh, take over the presidency um, and our our ex president um, leaves in the impeachment process he's very business oriented and he's already shown that he's, he's talked about making how to uh, improving business um, processes um, and 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 entrepreneurship development so it could be very positive so we're uh, us who work in the private sector are looking forward to that. Uh, but like again, the day by day, um, accelerators are still working. There's still uh, investment in companies going on. Entrepreneurs are still meeting up. There's still uh, ecosystem thriving. So, uh, to be honest, the day by day, I don't see that much changes. We're just hoping it could get better. Um, if, um, in terms of the the, the president, the, the vice president, who's now the acting president, does become full president after September, October, because he's more business pro pro business uh, oriented. That's that's what I I can share from my my own um, experience. Okay, and now we have a second question, and with this we need to finalize the webinar. We can follow up through email for other questions. Um, but the second question is about how to get a partner locally, like um, uh, Oscar from uh, London, Ontario is asking how I can get a partner in Brazil 
and trust that that person is going to do a good job for my company. No, very good, very important, and and, and, and good question, Oscar. Um, straight answer, but I um, it's reaching out to uh, people in the ecosystem. So you know, a lot of the people I invite you to join the other webinars because a lot of people who are who are going to be in the in the webinars are people who are very much include. Um, Active and know a lot of people in the ecosystem um, of accelerators, businesses, all kinds of sectors. So it's reaching out to these kind of people who you know will be glad to connect you with um, after the webinars as well. Um, eventually, you know, you can always reach out by e e email, um, e internet, and stuff. But I, I, you don't know how you don't know if they're going to be serious or not. Eventually, a lot of businesses, depending on the size of your businesses, uh, a lot of businesses do come uh, on a mission. Um, they come on a on a trip to Brazil. It's not, uh, perhaps not everybody has the finances for that at the moment, but um, here it's very much uh, Brazil relationship build uh, relationship focus, right? So you you want to you want to get to know the person who you're going to do business with here. Um, so that that's another way of traveling here is is very important to get to know the 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 on the ground reality, right? Um, I, I would start I would start with the contacts we're going to be sharing through the webinars. Um, you can always reach out to us for 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 questions or suggestions of specific sectors you're interested in. But yes, it's it's no no straight answer. It's very it's a, uh, a diligence that you have to do. You have to get to know them, uh, look at their background, um, uh, LinkedIn, you know, look through the different social medias and 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 find out who they are, uh, and then start dialoguing with them. And if you can make it on a trip to Brazil to meet them and others, it's also uh, recommendable. I hope, I, but you know, we invite you for the other webinars because you can also meet a lot of them there that can point you to the right uh, direction. Yeah, that's for sure. Thank you so much, Rafael, for sharing your time you. today. Um, for the others, we hope you you can uh, be at the other webinars. We are going to share all about the uh, the other webinars and who who are joining us uh, those days and the backgrounds and all that. So you will see that you can do uh, very good connections there and the next webinars that are free as well. Uh, so thank you, everybody. If you have more questions. Just please don't hesitate to contact us. Contact uh, at latamstartups.biz or hashtag latamstartups, and we're happy to answer any of your questions. Thank you so much again. Thank you. Bye. Bye.